Hello everyone, now welcome back to our video on the Avro Vulcan by Just Flight. Today's video is going to be concentrated on navigating this huge beast as well as uh, tackling its rather complicated automatic pilots and we'll take a look at that. We're also going to be doing a little bit of work as far as getting this thing into the air as well as kind of the kind of cruise babysitting that you're going to need to do with it. You'll see what I mean when we get there. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, we've got this thing started up. Everything is ready to go, uh, ready to rock. We need to start thinking about our navigational needs before we actually get into the air. Our journey today is going to be taking us on a pretty fun voyage up to Albany, New York. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my GPS, which is one of your options, by the way. And the purpose of my GPS here is not for the purposes of navigation, but actually for the purposes of kind of helping us out a little bit. And you'll see what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and type this in real quickly, keep it nice and simple here. Albany looks up pretty good, press enter. Uh, it looks to me like it's bearing of 42 degrees. That sounds pretty darn good to me. So this is going to provide us with some useful information. It's going to give us both a bearing as well as a distance. Um, of course, if we wanted to, we could actually navigate via GPS inside this aircraft. Uh, the way we would do that, of course, is we select our waypoint just like we would do before. We come up here where we have our little nav selector, and we click it to the GPS position. Uh, when we do that, swinging down here, let me go ahead and hide this to make it a little easier. This instrument will now give us an idea of where we want to go. Now, let me show you something funky about this instrument. This is not a directional gyro. This is the course selection knob. So one of the things you probably saw was that we need to go on a heading of 42 degrees. So I'm gonna push this, this would be for heading. Push it again, this would be for course. So unfortunately for us, uh, we'd have to set this all the way around to 42 degrees. Now this instrument will not rotate. It's just different, it's just how they do it. So because of that, we have to apply a little bit of common sense foo here to be able to identify where we are. Uh, you can see our course needle makes pretty much sense here at this point, and of course one of the things we can do is we can pull this back out, and we can adjust this so it's more or less centered on where we need to go. Like I said, uh, they definitely made this one a little different for us. So again, we have that index. This is now gonna be our line to tell us where we are. This instrument down here is going to tell us exactly how many miles we have and this one's even more useful but right now it's locked onto a TACAN channel that's actually kind of nearby to us so that's why that particular one is at the particular component that it is uh, coming down here we'll get to kind of that side of things and again these two instruments will copy each other so that that's exactly how that's going to go like I said just a little bit different now what I want to do now is I'm actually going to leave this on uh, GPS mode so you can see the way this work but let's say we wanted to use a VOR instead and uh, we have a couple different choices here we we have TACAN, of course, we have the nav option as well. Uh, TACAN is specifically TACAN. If you want to select a specific TACAN channel, what you can do is you can come over and press this button, jump to, <laughs> helps if you press the right screw here. There's a lot of screws in this plane. Come to here, and you can actually dial in the specific TACAN channel, in which case a 77 X-ray is the one that's basically right next to us. If you're looking instead to be able to navigate to a VOR, you'll have to float down here to this one. Uh, one thing, I'll just give you a quick piece of advice. Double check to make sure this is in the M position before you start cranking of the communications it's going to give you some trouble so what we can do here is we can actually come in here and dial in albany specific frequency here so i'll take a look at my little chart here let's see albany vertac is 115.30 so i can come in here 115.300 just like that so now we can dial it in as if it is a traditional course and of course what we have to do now is we have to come over here and make sure that this is set correctly we're an awfully long distance away so this may not read well for us and like i said just double check to make sure that you are in nav mode before you start getting carried away and you can see here since i have no measurement whatsoever you can tell immediately that uh, we are definitely not getting what we want for that uh, one thing we can do though is um albany is also 100 x-ray so if we wanted to we could actually go all the way back here again and actually specifically choose 100 x-ray for our uh, station there so if i do 100 and i said it's x-ray X-ray looks pretty good. TR looks pretty good. Jump back to the front seat. Um, I can now use that if I want to switch to it, assuming I'm in range. So if I slip back to TACAN here, you can see I'm not getting a reading here because I'm just too far away from Albany at this point to get a reading. But for our purposes, we'll actually set it up as if we were going to follow it anyway, even though we could actually follow either, including our GPS buddy that we have down here. Everything at that point is now pretty much ready to go. Uh, one of the things I like to do too is uh, once we get in the airborne, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and double check to make sure our handy dandy uh, terrain flying radar, aka radar altimeter, is working properly. And uh, you can actually pick the height that you wanna travel if you wanna do like uh, 500 feet, for example. You just come in here and do that. I think that is, yeah, that's that option right there. I'm not gonna set that up just yet. I'm gonna wait until we get into the air for it. So now it's just a matter of getting airborne. Let's do it.
I like how these old planes, you can tell the uh, power airplane's accelerating by the fuel fuel oil, which is that little needle that's like, going crazy in the bottom right corner here. So we're just going to slowly roll here. I'll do one last set of checks to make sure everything's good, our oxygen's good, our landing lights are set. i got to switch for that next to me for that, just to make my life a little bit simpler for this one. Just going to come taxing onto the runway here, nice and easy. Again, I'm not doing anything extreme. Keep it simple, keep it simple. And we'll keep this tra fairly traditional. Now, the aircraft has a definite limit to how long you can run it at takeoff power. So generally what I use is takeoff power to get in the air, and then, of course, I switch it back to about 95% power once I get going here. We can, of course, uh, run the limiter, which is that little switch down there if we wanted to, and we'll show you how that works once we get in the air. One thing I would like to do, though, before we go, is I'm just going to get my power kind of booted up on the automatic pilot here. This is a complicated piece of XML coding, and it gets a little funky, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arm out and uh, you'll see exactly why I'm doing that now. And we'll take a look at some of the other kind of switches for it later. Trust me, it's going to make you crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the brakes. We're going to go ahead and push the throttle about halfway. Give everybody a moment to boot up. Missile heading after takeoff is 42 degrees. Yeah! Let's go! This thing's nice when it's this light. It's never this light. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, rotate today is 145. Oh, boy, we're moving. We're moving. At 145, it takes very little to get this thing airborne. Little tiny tug. You're up. You can see this thing going. How dirty it is. All right, we've got a little bit of altitude underneath us. All I'm going to do is crack the throttle back just a tiny bit. Give us a little bit of moment. This is a good time to go ahead and retract the landing lights and all those other good things. Give myself a little bit of nose down trim here. And we're good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and execute a nice left turn. And you will be staggered by how much left rudder this thing takes in order to keep it somewhat coordinated. If you're looking for coordination, of course, you have this nice little kind of ball right here just to kind of remind you that you're not doing a good job of it like myself here. So we're just going to go ahead and execute a nice gentle left turn here. Now we're going to come to our initial heading. One of the things that makes the initial heading very challenging is if you look very closely there, you'll see that the way my heading is arranged is a little non-standard. This needle is my current heading. So you can see very clearly here that we're heading up basically kind of northish, even though we're heading down towards our target there. It's just a different way to do it. Go ahead and climb this one. Now, climbing is perfectly fine at 250 knots, and you want to treat it like a conventional airliner. You're not going to have too much trouble with that. A little bit of the bumpy stuff, but nothing too unusual there. Give it a couple taps of down trim. And there we go. I like that right there. There we go. Nice. About 250 knots. Probably go a little bit quicker. We could even do 310 if we need it on the way up, but like I said, it does not take much. And now we're just going to go ahead and execute a nice gentle turn roughly back towards our original course. See my little tiny refueling probe just sort of chilling there? It's kind of fun. all squared away here and we're gonna come back to a left Maybe one last check of my quick little notes I just noticed that it's a three two one heading and that's why we look that's why we look here we go it's a little bit better of course it gives us a little bit more time to climb so I'm not complaining at all I'm on a three zero zero heading here a little bit more left foot. Ah, you can see just how much inertia this thing has. It's incredible. There we go. Just swinging over to our left here. Nice and easy. Now we can start getting back on our original course. Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Ah, there we go. You see all the needles just boing. <laughs> oh, we were just able to pick on that tack end station. So you can see we're pointing towards, this is our airplane's nose. We're pointing about 300. Our selected is that 342, like I said. Oh, 321, rather. 
Always double check. Always double check. And you can see our distance is about 58 nautical miles, which checks out. We also have this handy dandy little needle that points directly where it is, make it a little easier for us. So in this case, I can see that the TACAN station itself is at 300. It might make more sense to come back to about 327 here, just to give, I'm sorry, 270, nice try, in order to give ourselves a little bit more time to kind of get on course. There we go, come swinging this way. That should give us plenty of altitude. I'm going to go ahead and start nosing down. Give the plane a second to catch up to you. Throttle back to about 75%. Give it a gentle tug. This is when you're going to really despise the control scheme they've come up with for us. Ah. There we go. Now I just need to bleed off a little bit there just to get ourselves back up to 18. And then we can start fighting with the trim, or fighting with the automatic pilots. There we go. So let's do a quick idiot checks here. I am pointing at about 250. The station's about 330. It's 54 nautical miles away. Expect yourself to need a lot more force than you think you need. This thing feels like a fighter jet at high altitudes. It's uh, really, really awkward in that regard. All right, let's get the automatic pilot going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. You can go ahead and do what you want. I'm going to pull out the tracking handle. And I'm going to pull out the engagement handle. And you'll get this little in button. And that'll tell you that everything is working properly. Now, one of the things you probably observed is as soon as I tucked that handle, we immediately started flying ourselves into a massive descent downwards. Yes. Remember a minute ago, I was warning you how challenging this autopilot is. It is vastly simpler to simply come in here and then to click on which mode that you'd like to do versus trying to do it. Sometimes you're going to have to tap it a couple times. But do you see as fast as we turned our head, we had lost 600 feet? And that is just to give you an idea of how challenging this particular aircraft is to operate. So just one of those kind of one more thing that they offer you to keep kind of interesting in your part. Like I said, I can't recommend this enough. Use this here more than trying to fit with these switches and hoping that they work exactly the way that you need them to. Otherwise, it'll make you absolutely insane because you'll be flipping these things on and off and kind of getting ready. All right, so now that that's out of the way, it's a good time to go ahead and start thinking about kind of our cruising chores, as I like to kind of call them here. I'll go ahead and put this away because we don't need it right now. A bunch of different things we need to monitor while we're cruising here. Uh, one thing we do is the center of gravity. So you probably observed here, we are extremely nose heavy. Um, we need to start burning some fuel out of the front of the plane rather than burn all the fuel out of the back of the plane. You know, the easiest way to do that, of course, is if you curl down here, you've actually got special controls to basically control the flow of fuel around the plane. Uh, one thing we could do is if we want to work really hard is we could start burning all the fuel out of the front and shutting off the fuel pumps in the back. Uh, that'll certainly do it. Another option we have is you actually have a center of gravity transfer switch. Now, what you can do here is you can actually set these both to manual and then select these switches. And what it will do is it'll cause the center of gravity to start shifting slowly towards it because of the bias of the fuel that you're going to move. You're actually going to start moving the fuel around. Now, the problem is we have full tanks of fuel. So there's really little room for us to actually do this with. Another option that you could do too, I'm going to go ahead and center both of these real quickly here. Again, these are your forward backward fuel pumps if you want to think about it another way. Is we also have the option, of course, just to burn fuel out of the front. And the easiest way to do that is we can just shut off the fuel pumps to anything we don't need a fuel pump for. So um, those are already off. I didn't need any those and want to pull anything out of the aux tanks here so i can just empty that all out so now we're just pulling fuel out of the front of the aircraft rather than pulling it out of the sides and now by doing that of course we're giving ourselves a nice little advantage to that particular extent now now we're getting going and everything's looking good our tack ends are set properly finally altitude hold eh, close enough kind of a thing we can start thinking about of all the other management problems we're going to be having with this one so i'm just going to float down here real quickly and you can see all the different fuel tanks that we have on board and you actually have another fuel tank on board as well and that is your bombay fuel tanks which has its own little kind of indicator that's uh, chilling back here in case that he wants to kind of see that one now one cool thing you could do here is you have these little push buttons right here so if I push that one, that's going to tell you exactly what you have going from that particular pump. And it's actually going to give you your own little indicator over there on the right-hand side. I also like the fact that you have, like, total fuel flow and all that. I don't know. I think stuff like that's just kind of cool kind of a deal. Oh, there it goes. Ugh. So you can see exactly how much fuel we're pulling out of that particular system. And I can actually push these switches, and you can watch this needle go firing around when I do that. You know, if I come to this one, you can see that it's not going to do anything. Come to this one, it's not going to do anything. Come to all these guys here. And again, it's all going to be based on what tank that you have selected at that particular moment. That's going to dictate uh, how fast you're pounding fuel out of that particular component. I just found that kind of a neat little thing that they just built that in there like that. It's just, just one more thing. 
So we're about 33 nautical miles away from our destination. As a matter of fact, I can zoom out on the GPS here. And you can see we're holding more or less a parallel course uh, coming in here to Albany. And it's a time to start considering our descent process on this one. Our uh, descent is relatively straightforward in this aircraft. It's just a matter of uh, kind of knowing when to descend. Now, this is just like an airliner as far as speeds go. So I usually tell people, take whatever your Mach number is, or take your altitude, multiply by three, add a zero kind of a thing. So we're at 18,000 feet. That would be 36. Uh, another one of those is going to be 54, uh, 54 nautical miles. We are well within range, so we can begin our descent immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disengage the automatic pilot. Pretty easy to do. There's just a switch. You just push that in like this. You're going to get this little thing that says off. And then we can go ahead and pull the nose down. And we can start enjoying our slow descent down into Albany. Uh, one thing to remember, though, is you're still responsible for navigation, which we've been doing a pretty darn good job of. You can see we're just slightly, we need to come to the right just a little bit. So what comes next, of course, is going to be landing. And now landing this plane, it's not bad, it's just different. But we'll take a look at that in the next video. Enjoy.